Hello everyone. Just going to review real quick with you the uh, Z-axis configuration. Uh, this of course is the lead screw nut. Um, it could be mounted either direction. There's plenty of lead screw clearance available. Uh, I'll probably mount this way because I'm going to put the Z-axis down from the top with the lead screw already mounted. And it's easier to get it to this end than the spring-loaded end, which is the anti-backlash section. The extended carriages have two mounting position capabilities for you to look at. And I kind of mounted them and took measurements to see how things would line up the best. If you put uh, the extended carriage in this position, uh, basically the bottom of the extrusion for the Z-axis uh, will travel all the way down to your work surface. Um, that's if you, of course, you have like a three-quarter base piece down along with another three-quarter inch uh, piece of uh, spoil board on top. The other position, of course, is raises everything up an inch and a half higher, which I'll probably do because my spindle mount will be adjustable, um, and then that way I can set the bottom of the uh, spindle to the height that I want to go to and leave this area down here for other potential attachments. The Z-axis assembly basically goes your aluminum extrusion. You have your motor mount that bolts onto the end, and your motor, of course, bolts on. Then you have a bearing block here with radial bearing, and then, of course, you have a helicoil for a coupler here. Now, in my case, I have a 14 millimeter shaft, so I had to bore all this out, which was not fun because this is basically like a spring and likes to move all over the place. But I got it accomplished. The other thing I want to point out is that basically when you assemble this, in order to be able to get the steel flush with the bottom of the aluminum extrusion, you're going to basically have to mount this the whole way back uh, to allow enough room so that the lock, locking collar for the lead screw will clear without hitting the steel. Uh, in between here and there is uh, two washers and a thrust bearing, and then of course on this side between the collar is another set of washers and a thrust bearing and then this will be clamped uh, together and then tightened down so that it uh, secures the lead screw. Um, of course the steel plate goes on you have four bolts slide up and attach. So that's basically it for that. Um, after I get it assembled I'll do another quick video. The other thing uh, I will review real quick is I bought one of the 80 millimeter spindle mounts from Aaron at CNC router parts. It came with uh, two socket head cap screws for clamping. However, it didn't come with any uh, mounting mechanisms, bolts or T-nuts or anything to put it on, so I'll have to come up with something there. Um, there is an additional threaded bolt or threaded hole here and you can use this probably to mount additional things if you want to for your spindle, but for the most part, and I believe it's a 5 16 thread, it uh, is only threaded through this upper portion of the mount. So I'm assuming, and I'm probably pretty sure, that you'll thread a 5, uh, five 16 bolt in here, and that'll help spread apart the clamp so that you can slide your spindle in easier, and then you can relieve it and then tighten it down. Um, I will have to do a little bit of work. The surfaces on the inside, especially here where it's threaded, uh, see, I don't know if you can see that real good or not, but there's a lot of burr kick up there. The spindle won't slide through, so I'm going to have to uh, basically uh, sand that down. But all in all, it's pretty solid, so I'm looking forward to using it. And uh, that's it for the Z-axis so far. I'll do a quick review next video. Thank you.